Hello everyone. Healing trauma with family constellation is the topic of our session today with Lisa Myron. Lisa has masters in coaching, family and systemic constellations, EFT, freedom techniques, channeling and Reiki. I am Amita from Nourish Dog, a global platform for natural and holistic therapies. I would like to welcome Lisa Myron to this program today. Welcome Lisa. Hi, Amita. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. I'm excited to be here with you. All right, let's get started. What do we have today? Okay, okay so, so yeah, please start with how does this trauma affect us and what exactly is family constellation? Okay, perfect. So welcome everybody. I wish that I could see your faces and um, I will imagine you all there <laughs> to be connected to you to be talking to you from heart to heart. So um, first I wanna say, uh, what is ancestral trauma? So ancestral trauma is all the trauma that our ancestors were not able to deal with because it was too hard, because it was too traumatic, because there was too much pain, pain too much fear, too much difficulty. And what happens is that um, out of love for our ancestors, we take on what is pending for them to heal. And we take it on unconsciously. We don't know that we do this. We take on many things for our, our ancestors. We take on their emotions. They, we take on the, the parts when they were not able to include everybody in the family system, when they were not able to be in their place in the family system. And it, this is part of our survival. It helps us to be able to deal with our difficulties and it helps the family system it helps the family system come into balance. So the ancestral trauma means the trauma that our ancestors had that they were not able to deal with that we carry for them. And then it's gonna uh, manifest in our lives in, in different forms. And that's what we're healing with family constellations. Family constellations is basically a tool that we use in our lives to be able to heal this that we're unconscious about. First, to be able to uh, be aware of it and then to be able to heal it so that we don't carry it anymore, so that we help our family system heal, we help our ancestors heal, and we help the next generations do better because they're not gonna have struggles with this anymore. So I'm gonna talk about the different part, parts of the family system and the, the different kinds of entanglements that we have in the family system. So this comes from Bert Hellinger. He uh, is the one that started working with all these family systemic issues. And he realized that in the family system, there's several orders of love, he called them, that are like rules. So there are se several things that need to be in place. And when something is not in place, then the system goes out of balance and does something to be able to regain this balance. So these orders are lo of love are la like laws that exist in every single system and that are gonna, uh, are gonna help the family system flow, are gonna be able uh, to keep the family system connecting to life and, and, and to continue. And, um, and the object is for every family system to, to survive, con to continue for the new generations to be able to do better than the ones that were before. So, um, so I'm gonna be starting, start talking about the orders of love and the first order is the order of belonging. And I'm gonna give you some examples of how this works, but this does not mean that everybody works the same way because each person is different, each family system is different, each situation is different. So I like to give the examples because this, this helps understand, but it doesn't mean that it is, it's always like that in every single situation. So for example, the order of belonging means that everybody in the family system belongs. It doesn't matter what has happened in the past, how the family system members were, everybody belongs in the family system. And something very important to know is that everybody belongs from the moment of conception. This means that everyone that was not able to be born is part of the family system and needs to have their place in the family system. So everybody belongs from the moment of conception until the last days of, uh, of their life. And what usually happens in the family system is that there are some forgotten members of the family. There are some that are excluded. There are some that are excluded consciously because they're family members that did things that we don't agree, things that we believe that were against the values of the family. And often we've heard things that, for example, maybe you think, 
uh, you ask around, you know, didn't you have like an uncle? And everybody's like, shh, shh, shh don't, don't even say that name. <laughs> and then, you know, you know this, what do you mean, you know? And then, and usually there's this person, somebody that did not act uh, accordingly to the values of the family, and then everybody wants to forget about them. And sometimes, you know, there are even pictures of the family and they, and they cut out the ones that, that where the member is there and they just don't want to even acknowledge that they, this member exists. So let's make an example. Let's say that I'm making this up that I have an uncle and he uh, was an alcoholic and he stole all the, all the money uh, of the family, he had several relationships with everybody. So nobody wants to talk about him. So then the moment that I'm born, I feel this, this is all unconscious. This is all an energetic. I feel this like void, like someone is missing. I feel and I make the connection with the one that's missing. But this, in this case, is my uncle. And by making this connection, we also call it entanglement. I'm gonna start having uh, similarities to him. So maybe I'm gonna have problems with addiction. Maybe I'm gonna have problems with money. Maybe I'm gonna have problems with relationships. And this is my unconscious way of letting everybody know in the family system that someone with these characteristics is missing in the family system. And as I have these characteristics and I belong in the family system, this other person as well. So this is my unconscious way to honor the person, to bring the person back in the family system, to acknowledge the, the place that, that, that this person has in the family system. The problem with my life is that I don't wanna have addictions. I don't wanna have problems with the other others. I don't wanna have uh, problems with money. But then, so I, I, I go to a class, I read a book, I try to, to get help and always I'm stuck. I go back to the same. And the reason why I'm this, that I go back and I'm stuck and I'm not able to heal this in my life is this entanglement that I have. But unconsciously, I want to do this to be able to honor my uncle, to be able to give him his place in the family system. So with the family constellations, what we're doing is that we're going into this system and seeing why do I have these issues in my life? Why am I stuck? Oh, it's because of this uncle. So I'm going to honor and respect him consciously. I'm going to give him his place. I'm going to accept that he needed to be that way for whatever reason. I'm going to leave the responsibility of what he did with himself. And I'm going to let go of what I'm caring for him because it's not my responsibility. And then it's going to be easier for me. I'm still responsible for my life. I still, you know, if I have problems with addictions, I still have to do my best. I need to look for help. Uh, if I have problems with money, I have to be responsible for what I'm spending. I'm still responsible for my life and what I'm doing and the consequences of what I'm doing. But things are going to be easier. For when before they were always stuck and I always go back to the same pattern, the same problem, the same issue, now things are gonna start shifting. They're gonna start being easier. And we carry as well emotions for, our, when we have these entanglements, we carry the emotions for our ancestors. We carry, for example, if there's a big trauma, if they suffered a big loss, if they were in a war, if they had to leave their, their home and they were not able to deal with those emotions, we're gonna carry it from them. And the other part that I was saying from belonging is that uh, from the moment of conception, which, which means that miscarriages and abortions also form part of the family system. And here not, we're not in the, in the part of the duality of what's right and wrong, what's good or bad. Here we're in the part of connecting with our heart and including everybody and giving the place to everyone. So everybody from the moment of conception has their place in the family system. So when, when there's a, a miscarriage, and, and can, it can happen that even that the mother does not know that she was pregnant. What happens is that other children are gonna have, a, are not are gonna have, could have an entanglement with this miscarriage. And because this uh, baby was not able to live, then if I have an entanglement with this being that was not able to live, I'm not gonna allow myself to enjoy life. And I'm gonna auto sabotage myself, even though I don't know that I'm doing this, because I'm, I want to be, like loyal to this brother or sister, if they were not able to enjoy life, why should I? And again, what we're doing in the family constellations is starting to be aware, like, oh, I have an entanglement with a brother or a sister that was not able to live. I'm gonna now give them their place in the family system. I'm gonna remember them. I'm not gonna think that we are three. I now realize that we're four. I'm gonna give the place to this person and I'm gonna carry them always in my heart and remember them. And I'm gonna live my life to the fullest and enjoy because I'm gonna do it for both of us instead of not doing it for any of us. And this is all the healing that we're doing in the family system. 
So this is order of belonging, but everybody belongs. And I'm going to talk now about the order of, of the hierarchy. So the order of the hierarchy is that everybody has their place in the family system according to when they came in the family system. And they have their role as well. So in the example that I was saying that when there's a miscarriage, for example, maybe I'm the first one born in my family, but there was a miscarriage before me. So I'm considered the first one in the family, but I'm not the first one. I'm actually the second one. And I need to consider myself as the second one in the family system to be able to give the place to the first one. And when I'm not in that place, when I'm considered the first one, I'm in the place of somebody else. And I'm in the place of someone that's not alive. So then again, I'm not going to feel that I belong where I am. I'm going to feel always that I'm out of place. I'm going to feel that I'm always looking for something else in life because I'm not comfortable where I am. And that's because I'm not comfortable in my position. So another thing that we do in the family constellations is to for everybody to have their position. And this comes as well with a role. For example, I am the daughter of my mother. I am the mother of my daughter. I am the partner of my partner. And this all, of course, seems logic, but when you start thinking of relationships, you know of, of someone that has a son that is like the father of the family, that's always telling the mother what to do, that's responsible for the whole family. And this son is not in his place. He's not the father, he is the son. Sometimes we, we see, um, for example, uh, daughters that are very close to, to, to their fathers. And it's like they're more important to the father than the mother. So when we start really thinking about the dynamics that we have with others in the family system, we start looking and realizing that there are disorders, that some of us are not in our place. For example, when I was saying that I am my parent's daughter, this means that I need to respect them. This means that I need to respect their decisions, even if I don't agree with them. And often we when we grow up and become adults, we start telling our parents what to do, what to do with their money, what to do with their health, that they need to go to the doctor, that they need to eat more vegetables, that they should not eat so, many, so much ice cream. And what are we doing? We're stepping out of our position. We're becoming their parents. And then this is gonna have consequences in our life. It's gonna have the consequences for others in the family system. So this is very important. And this is another aspect that we work in the family constellation, the order that we have and the role that we have. So now I want to talk to the balance of giving and receiving. And this is another order of love that Bert Hellinger uh, described. So the balance of giving and receiving means that there always has to be a balance. That, uh, for example, uh, and this goes in many areas of our lives, when we are within, in our work, we are giving our services to, to a company, to a person, and we're going to get paid for these services. So um, it's a balance of giving and receiving. We're offering our services and we're receiving money as gratitude for the services. And money is the energy of gratitude. So we can think it, and to see if we feel money of something different could be that we have beliefs that are blocking us to be connected with money. But money is gratitude. It's connected with life. So um, when we work and we don't receive enough money for our work, what happens? We start feeling tired. We start feeling exhausted. We start feeling that we're not happy. And we start looking for somebody, for something else, another work. And that's because we're not in balance. When we receive a lot of money for a little effort, what happens is that this money does not have strength. And then it suddenly disappears of our lives. And, we, and, and there's some studies of people that have uh, won the, the lottery. It doesn't happen to everyone, but to, to many. Um, when they win a lot of money, they lose a lot of money very easily. And that's because the money doesn't have strength because it's not uh, imbalanced to what the effort that uh, the, the people did to get that money. Um, there's also some, um, I worked with a person that used to work in, in prison and he was saying that uh, he had the experience of talking and working uh, uh, as a therapist uh, with people and a lot of them that had stole many things they would have the same experience. They would suddenly get a lot of things from what they would steal and suddenly everything would disappear. So they would have to steal again and then they would get a, a, a lot from what they stole. And then again, all this would disappear very fast. So it's the same. So, um, and in relationships happens as well. Uh, it's important, for example, with our partners that we are in balance on the giving and receiving that we have. There's um, this situation that uh, we, each of us is giving something different. And this doesn't mean that we're going to have a notebook and I'm going to say, you know, today I wash the dishes, so tomorrow is your turn because otherwise we're not in balance. It's not like this. It's just like a general feeling. 
and it happens in relationships and it happens uh, as well in um with the situations of friendships when there's one person that gives a lot to the other one it's usually the person that's receiving a lot that does not want to stay in the relationship because um the person that's receiving a lot cannot give back on the same way for one reason or the other so we'd rather leave the relationship because it's starting to leave the relationship with a lot of guilt they feel uncomfortable that they're not able to give in the same amount so they, they would rather leave and not be in that relationship anymore so this is important to know because when we're giving to somebody else we need to be responsible we need to give first only what the other person actually wants and not what we want them to have or what we want to give and also uh, as much as the other person can give back to us because otherwise if the person cannot give the same amount that we're giving we're going to lose the balance and we're going to lose the strength in the relationship so that's a little bit about the balance about giving and receiving and now i'm going to talk about the importance of acceptance so and, and for me the importance of acceptance is like one of the most powerful things we can do in uh, in life in, in, with uh, integrating this work in our lives and it's accepting everybody the way that they are accepting everything the way that it is so uh, acceptance means not wanting to not judging or criticizing others and the most important part of the acceptance is the acceptance of our parents and acceptance of the way that they were uh, the way they are of what they gave us and we need to understand that if a parent is not able to love a child, it's not because they did not want to love the child, but because they could not love a child, because maybe they were not loved as children. We often think about our parents with what they gave us and what they did not gave us and what they should do differently and how they should behave differently. And we don't know much about their lives, about their traumas, their struggles, uh, what they're carrying for the family system, the entanglements, the the, the situations that have happened in the past. So, and, and this is the same for everybody in our lives. But what's important is to know that everybody, and including ourselves, we're doing the best that we can. So when we look at others, we need to understand that they're doing the best that they can and then take responsibility for our lives. So if somebody is hurting us, instead of not accepting the other person the way that they are, we need to put barriers and protect ourselves and then remove ourselves from the, um, uh, relationship. If we don't want to be in that relationship, but we often start looking for others to change. We start looking for situations to change, to adapt to our needs, to what we can do. And it's the other way around. We need to accept the situations. We need to accept the challenges and us uh, adapt. And it's a little bit with, for example, um, right now we're in the middle of the, of the pandemic of the COVID. And, and you can see this very easily. There's a lot of people uh, like rejecting and like saying like, I, I don't want to deal with this. I want this to be over. And right now there's even people saying, I want the year 2020 to be over. As if, if magically in 2021, January 1st, everything is different. <laughs> and what, what's happening there? They're, they're rejecting. They don't want to accept that we are in this situation. So we have to come from acceptance. You know, we are in a pandemic. We are in this situation. I have to stop thinking on how life was before and waiting for that to come back. The situation is right now the way it is, and I'm going to ad adapt to it. If my job was lost, then I'm going to find a new job in this new situation. But when we still keep on holding to the past and try to change things of the present to be able to adapt them to what we wanted them to be, we're just you know, swimming against the current, not being able to adapt, and we're going to get exhausted. So you know, we need to understand that in this life, we are in this river, and we can either try to swim against the current or we, we, we can get a boat to be able to navigate it the best way possible and to be able to connect to life. And once we're in the boat, we're gonna be able to admire the, the scenery, the trees, the rocks, the water. And sometimes we're gonna bump into some rocks, but then we're gonna be able to, to, to manage it easily if we accept that, that this is the situation, that we're in the river, that there was a rock, instead of just trying to swim against the current. So, uh, so this is the importance of acceptance, acceptance of everybody in life, and, and especially accepting um, our parents the way that they are. And part of this acceptance of our parents has to do because they gave us life. So they uh, energetically, it's like there's a connection to life um, by accepting them. By accepting them, we accept life. 
We are 50% our father and 50% our mother. So by accepting them, we also accept ourselves. So when we accept them, we accept what they gave us. We accept life and then life can give back to us. And life is going to give back to us with love, with abundance, with health, with, with success. But first we need to do this work of acceptance and thank and, and the connection with that thankfulness to be, for gratitude for what we have, for what we did receive. So this is all the work that we're doing uh, with the, the family constellations. We're working like that we are using this tool to go deeper on the system, on the unconscious level to see what are those bonds, those entanglements, those situations that have us stuck in our life that are not able to let us move forward, to be able to let go, to accept, to heal, to honor and respect everybody in the family system, to see our situations, our life, and to be able to connect to life and to all that life can give to us, to be responsible for our lives and to be able to do what's necessary for, for, for the best uh, life that we, we can have. And this is all the work that we're doing in, in Family Constellations. So I think that this is, um, oh yeah, so they have another one. So when do we do a Family Constellation? When we see issues in our life where we feel stuck, when we are not able to move forward, when we're not able to, to flow in life, like I was saying, this part of the river, when we're not realizing that we are able to flow easily in life, we'll always have problems, we'll always have difficulties, because this is how we learn in life. This is how we grow, this is how we evolve in this part of life. So here we're not trying to not have problems. Here what we're trying is to be able to deal with them in the best way possible. So when we have a health issue, a problem, a situation, an emotion that we feel stuck with, that suddenly is overwhelming and more than what we're able to handle, all those situations are gonna, uh, it's like an alert that's telling you there's something here that you really need to heal. There's something here that's telling you. There's something that you need to go deeper. And um, when we have uh, money issues, when we have work issues, relationship issues, either with others, with friends, with our uh, family members, when we have either mental health or, or, or physical health, when we're not able to, to have a partner or to have a good relationship with our partner or with our children. So all these are situations that are like, you know, like a bell that's like ring, like saying, eh, 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 you know, there's something here I'm telling you, there's something that you have to go deeper. So it's like an alarm that's telling you, oh, this is the moment that you should do a constellation to go deeper and to be able to heal this aspect in your life. So um, so that's it. That's what I wanted to say. This was the introduction that I wanted to share with you. Great, great. Uh, we are open for questions. I see people in Zoom uh, who, who are logged in. So, so you are welcome to put your questions in the chat window. Um, you know, Lisa can answer some of the questions and she does Zoom sessions, um, you know, and we will be bringing her group session as well. She also does a private session. Uh, we'll be bringing uh, both these sessions soon. Um, I, I do have a question while someone might be thinking about a question. I think all of us are sort of like a stuck one way or the other. You know, either we all have some emotional baggage that we're carrying through, you know, either from our parents, like you told, talked about earlier, or from our siblings or cousins. So this is an ongoing problem. Uh, I, per, per, I feel that all of us have something or the other all the time carrying carrying that baggage, right? What you talked about the ancestral. So how often should we do this uh, family constellation? Yeah, so that's a great question. So um, like you said, yeah, many of us feel stuck in life and we all have many entanglements. Um, usually the entanglements that we have are from our parents, grandparents, great grandparents, and everybody, all of us have a lot. And the way that we're able to heal our issues that we have similar to them, where they were not able to heal them, then, well, then we heal ourselves and we heal them. So maybe, you know, they struggled with fear. And then we have a situation when we start struggling with fear. And we realize that, you know, we're rejecting this fear. And at some moment we said, you know, I don't know why I'm rejecting this fear because this fear is actually helping me. So I'm gonna look at this fear, I'm gonna accept it, I'm gonna see what's telling me and I'm gonna be say thank you to this fear. And it's actually telling me that, you know, there's a pandemic and I need to protect myself and I need to be careful with this. And, oh, you know, yes, it's right, you know, thank you. And now I'm gonna have to move forward, you know, now I don't feel this fear anymore. So what I'm doing here is that I'm dealing with the fear in a way that's healthy and I'm dealing and doing what they were not able to do. So then I'm healing and I'm healing that entanglement that I have for them. So 
but then there are moments that I'm going to not be able to deal with my fear or with my uh, sadness or with my relationship with my brother. That's always something that's co conflict uh, there or with the relationship with my son or that I had health issues. So when I have tried something uh, to, to shift, to change, and it always comes back like I'm in a, a pattern or that I feel that it's like overwhelming more than it, that, uh, for example, an emotion that it's more than what it should be for the situation that I'm dealing with. So anything that I have tried in the past that doesn't seem to shift, that doesn't seem to, to heal, that, that's still being a big problem and no matter what I do, it's still coming up. And that's a situation when, when I should do a constellation. Sure, sure. And then there are all these issues, you know, sometimes uh, some of the kids uh, are abused by their parents mentally, right? Not the physically part of it. And, and, and you know, and, and you see that and we had another, um, expert who had come on it and some of the, sometimes you know the women or the men they don't realize it until they're 40 or 50 year old and then the whole thing comes out so and you talked about the acceptance order of acceptance and put sort of like a barrier towards people who are not uh, you know who are basically blocking you uh, it's very difficult for for a kid who grows up in an abusive relationship and then how do they you know, how do they get out of it? And how do they put a barrier? And when do they do that when they become a teenager? I mean, what's your experience in something like this kind of a situation? Yes, it is a very complicated situation. It's a, it, and it's a difficult situation. And yeah. when, when the child is a young child, the work is uh, for the parents. Because any situation that's difficult for a child uh, um, you know, uh, uh, an issue that it's, it's difficult with school, a health issue, a situation that's difficult socially, a situation that the kid is struggling. It's an entanglement that that kid is caring for their parents. That's so right. It's the parents that they that need to, to do the work. So um, when the parents are the, what I've seen is usually that uh, it's either some kid that has had a, an abusive relationship it's either the parents are not ready to, to work with it or it's a child that's already an adult and it's dealing with that situation of the past. So Correct. then we, we, we work with that. So if the child is young, we have to work with their parents, but their parents have to be willing to do the work and to change and to heal that aspect. Yeah. Otherwise, it, it's, it, we cannot do the work. As yeah, because it carries it, it right? Carries, the child will carry it all the way through the adult. Well, yeah, yeah, so if the child is young, the work has to be done by the parents and the parents have to want to do this. Otherwise, we cannot do it. And if the child is already an adult, that we're gonna, so then we can do the work with the child directly. And what we do, it's a work of accepting the situation that happened, of working with the own trauma of the person, but also working and accepting their parents on the part that we're gonna leave the responsibility with them because they were the responsibles, they were are the responsibles for that hurt. And usually the child takes on that responsibility. So leave the responsibility with the parents and to connect to the part that the parents were doing the best that they could, that they were not able to do it differently for whatever reason, for the entanglements that they had, for the traumas that they had as a child, because they're repeating the pattern because they don't know how to do it differently. So we leave the responsibility with them, but we understand that they were doing the best that they could. And we still connect to the gratefulness for what they did give the, the, that, that child that's already an adult. And if there's nothing that they give other than life because they gave that child for adoption, then to be grateful at least for life because they yeah. did get the life. And that connects them with acceptance and gratefulness of the life that they got. Sure, so that's, sure. that's the work that we would do. Sure, sure. And how long are your sessions uh, for? The, the, talk about uh, you know, how many sessions uh, an average person will have to do with, with you and how long are the sessions that last? So the sessions are 90 minutes for, for a family constellation session. And we usually do um, one constellation for topic that the person wants to work on. Because this is not like therapy. This is nothing that we go back every week constantly, but it's something that we go into. For example, maybe I have a problem with money. So we do a constellation and we realize that the problem with money comes because my grandfather lost all his money and because my great grandfather from the other side had problems with his job. And then we look at all these entanglements and then I heal, you know, we let go, I, I through the process. So, so that's already heal. And then 
I need to be responsible for my life. And, you know, if I want to have a good work, I need to also be able to, um, I need to do a good, a good job. I need to, you know, make an effort. So we're not going to do a second constellation on, on the same topic on, unless several months have passed, because usually uh, with one is, it's enough and we don't need to do more than one. In some cases, we need to do more than one, but we're not going to do them un unless three months have passed. However, what I have seen with my clients is that when clients come and do at least three sessions, they start benefiting for an easier flow in life. It's like, you know, maybe one does a constellation for uh, the work, another one for the relationship with a uh, partner, and another one with the relationship with, um, with an illness that they've had. Uh, so for, for different topics, and they do at least three, it's like things suddenly start flowing and it's th like things suddenly in life are not getting stuck so much. And that is something that I have seen with my clients, that usually after three more or less of different topics, it helps them to be more connected to life. That's great. And in the group session, you it would be like everyone talks about their entanglement in a group session, like a group of four or something. Is that how you do it, in the group sessions? It depends. It depends because I do different kinds of group sessions. So for when I do a group family constellation session, what we do is that we do a constellation for one of the persons uh, and we do the constellation all together. And even though it's not our topic, we all heal. We always are connecting to the healing and we're healing aspects of our family system if we're just there present with the constellation that's taking place. So that is like a family constellation session that we're doing in a group. But I also do workshops where we do exercises for everybody to work on their own topics. So maybe, you know, the, um, the, the group topic is going to be how to be uh, connected with life and with abundance. So then everybody's going to look at the different aspects of their lives that where they feel that they're not connected with abundance. And they're going to work with their own issues from their family systems. And we do many exercises to be able to clear several aspects of the family system that everybody has from their own family system. So it would depend on what kind of session I'm doing. Got it, got it. Any questions from uh, any of the attendees in Zoom? I, I do see the attendees. So if there are any questions, uh, you're welcome to put it in chat window. Um, if not, I, we have written our email here. Uh, you, you're welcome to send it to us after the session. And um, we will be, Elisa will be coming back with her group workshops. We will work with her on the topics, uh, right, Lisa? And we'll let everyone know what the topics are. So, um, okay, I'm just waiting. With that, uh, I like to summarize, I like to end this session. So any final thoughts from you, Lisa? No, just thank you so much for having me here. Um, I think this is such a topic that I've, I've seen transform the lives of so many and something that we're not aware of that it's, um, that I'm happy to be able to just share the information because just with starting to be aware and start to think of us, of our family system, we start already the healing process. So thank you for, for making this possible. No, no, absolutely. We, I, I don't think many people know about the entanglement and the way you described it was beautifully done. So I, I think it can help a lot of other people to uh, disentangle themselves with yeah. that thought. <laughs> <laughs> With that thought, have a great afternoon and, and please uh, share our sessions uh, and tune in um, to more sessions uh, that are coming this week. Thank you so much. Signing off now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.